welcome back. And we are going to highlight for a few minutes the American Red Cross. It's local and it's all over the world. And they have through countless years saved lives and given hope to thousands and thousands of people. And I'm just, I'm thrilled to have both of you here today. And I want to introduce who she said, I'm just a volunteer. That's the way she put it. Uh, Janae Knoll. And next to her is John Wareham. And John is the Chief Public Affairs Officer. And this is for 27 counties in South and North Carolina that you are here. I mean, it, the, the Red Cross is everywhere, but you're designated for 27 counties, am I right? Yes, we've, we're broken down into divisions and okay. then into smaller regions. And the Western Carolinas region is 11 counties in upstate South Carolina and 16 counties in extreme Western okay. North Carolina. And you know, you always think of, there was an article in the paper that you need volunteers, disaster volunteers. You always think of war, of tornadoes, of floods, of a bombing, terrible things happening. But a disaster can be one family, and you're there for everybody. And that is the most common disaster that we respond to. Just last week in, in our region here in the Western Carolinas, our volunteers responded to 33 different disasters. 32 of those were single family house fires, yeah. one multifamily apartment unit, but uh, 112 individuals, it was uh, 70 adults, 42 children, suddenly with no place to live. Oh, thank God for the Red Cross then, huh? Yeah, and I want to ask you, because you are a super volunteer, <laughs> um, what, do, what do people have, what kind of ability and training and everything do they have to have to become a volunteer? Well, they don't have to have anything uh, in particular. Um, any. They can do anything as small or as involved as, as they want. They don't have to devote a lot of time. It can be just a couple hours a week. So you're not looking for, for instance, somebody with medical training, although you wouldn't turn them away, but I mean, Absolutely. you're looking for anybody who has a will to help. Right, right. There, there's office work to be done. There's phone calls to be made. Um, they don't have to be prepared to be deployed to a national disaster. Um, they can do anything. And I mean, we, we can find a spot for just about anybody if they're willing to help out. Peggy, if I can interject Ooh. right now, we have a great need for volunteers with, with management and supervisory experience, what we're calling our, our volunteer leadership, um, because we have a great need in areas of logistics and operations. Uh, we could use a government liaison that would be the individual who would be a liaison between the Red Cross and emergency services, the police department, fire department, for example. We know that there's a lot of folks out there who maybe they've recently retired, been retired for years, mm -hmm. who have that kind of experience. And we promise to fast track them through our <laughs> orientation. And uh, because we are 95% of the Red Cross workforce is volunteer. We're a very lean organization. There aren't many staff members. And we really need some folks with leadership background to step up and join us and help lead the whole pool of volunteers. But I don't want anyone to be intimidated by that because you don't have to have any experience like that to help. And the Red Cross will train you. There's lots of classes we can take. You have orientation meetings that go on all the time. And so if somebody thinks, oh, I'd, I'd like to get, and that's a nice way to meet other people. It's an outlet. But you might say, well, I have a little time. I could help. But so they could go to one of these orientation meetings, and then if they don't like it, there's no commitment. There's no papers to sign. Right. They can see what it's all about. Absolutely. We hold them from uh, generally from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on a weeknight. Uh, we have one or two a week. Uh, the best way folks can find out about it is to call our Red Cross office here in Greenville or in Asheville, where they can go to redcross.org okay. and uh, click on ways to help and then ways to volunteer. And if they enter their zip code, it'll give them instructions from okay. there. Well, we, I have uh, redcross.org and then it's 
282-8647. Yes, that's, that's the number which we have on our screen that's if anybody great. wants it. And that will get folks either in North Carolina or South Carolina okay. directed to now the right information. And you helped, I think, with Sandy, didn't you? Yes. Okay, Sandy? Yep, I've been deployed three times um, since I started volunteering three years ago. And um, it's, it's an experience. Uh, but you also can work right here at home. Absolutely. We have the um, disaster action teams, which go to the home fires or local small disasters. And they're on call um, uh, one week out of the month, 24-7. And, you know, there were weeks where I would get no calls. And then, uh, like John said, a week like last week when they if were the weather's cold, constant. They have fires. Yes, or if there's a long-term loss of electricity uh, with ice storms and that kind of thing mm -hmm. that's happening in the, in the uh, northeast, we could actually get deployed up there. And volunteers, it's a, you have a choice if you're a volunteer whether you want to go and assist outside of our area or not. So that's left to you. That's left up yeah. to you, the volunteer. No one is forced, there's no mandated trips, but there is a call that goes out and we were given a heads up this morning to be ready to deploy if necessary. And that can happen, that can happen once a week and that can happen once a month. So you never, you never really know. But you need, you need right now, you need people to step forward and volunteer. Uh, we certainly do. We cover a, a wide geographic area, a lot of topography between, say, Yancey County and Western North Carolina and Union County and South Carolina, all the way down to McCormick County along the Savannah River. We cover a really large area. 2.1 million people live in this region. And so you can imagine 24-7 having a team of at least two volunteers go out and respond to whatever disasters come not just fires, we had flooding last summer. Uh, of course, we've got the spring severe weather that's gonna yeah. be on us here in a couple of months before we know it. It's just, there's always, and then there, of course, there's the, the large national disasters that occur that uh, are very labor intensive and really require a lot of volunteer help. So you people do a, a fabulous job. You Our volunteers for, do. For uh, years. As I said, 95% of the Red Cross is volunteers. Yeah. And how did you get involved? Well, we moved here um, from Cleveland three years ago, and I knew I wanted to volunteer, so I just got online and started checking out websites. And I, the Red Cross one intrigued me enough that I called and went to an orientation, and, and I've been there ever since. And I imagine you've had some very interesting experiences. Comes with the territory. Um, the, the, one thing not to forget is that they train us very well. You know, we, by the time we get to that point, we're ready and we know what to do. You know, it's not, they don't throw you into situations where you're, you don't know what's, what to do or how to take care of people. But for instance, a family that their home burned, they have no place to go and they have nothing but the clothes on their back. They don't have their medication if they have medication they take on a regular basis. They don't have clothes. They don't have a, usually a place to go. So what do you do? Get them a hotel room? Or how do you help right. people well, like that? The Red Cross will take care of their immediate needs for, say, three days. Okay. If they don't have a place to live. Give them a chance to regroup, yes, so exactly. to speak. Yes, exactly. And we give them a lot of literature uh, that aids them in getting to the next step after they get through the shock of what's happened to them. Um, and like John said, we have um, mental health personnel um, that we're trained to know when we need to call them into a situation. Okay. Um, and we'll give them money for food or winter coats if they've come outside without coats or clothes. And we carry blankets and we give them each what we call a comfort kit that has all your basic toiletry items. Um, so we try to and take care of their immediate needs like at that, that point. For families with small children, it's it's even worse. Yes, it is difficult, and we always we try to uh, make sure that they're on track with their recovery. We'll call them after a couple of weeks and see what if they have any further needs, and so it's. Um, so you have these orientation meetings every week. 
so that if people miss one, they can find another one. And this goes on year round. And we stretch them throughout the region. So we have orientations in Anderson, Greenville, Spartanburg, Asheville, uh, all over the region so folks can pick one that's close to them and go to that orientation. And do you need medical people to volunteer? Certainly. Uh, disaster health services is okay. another big area, absolutely. We need okay. folks from all walks of life. As I said, we're really making a push, particularly for folks with management and supervisory experience, okay. because that has never before really been an area of emphasis. But because so many of the things we do, especially in a national disaster, can be quite complex in terms of logistics and operations. Okay. Folks who have that background, maybe through military training or yeah. business training, uh, we greatly encourage them to come and, and see what it's all about. Well, we encourage you to think about the Red Cross and we, we could all step forward and do something very positive. And I thank you for coming and sharing with us and hope you get lots of phone calls. We'll, we'll have you back if you'll come. Oh, okay. we will. We'll give, you okay. a, uh, we'll give you a report. Wherever you are, stay safe, stay happy. We'll see you next time.